Good evening, Tammy, Stormers, Penguins, Joyce. Oh no, it's evening, it's six o'clock. Keith, it's good to see you. <laughs> Mary, Mary Joyce, it's good to see you. <laughs> oh, Denise is at work. All right, Glenn, thanks for joining us. There's my beautiful bride, Susan. Hey, Stan. Oh, the Burgesses are here. Oh, wait, Denise is watching and Glenn is watching. enough to get started. Pause the music. We'll come back to the music later, right? Okay, so good evening. Here we are. We've got evening service and uh, I'll be reading your comments. This is a little bit more uh, laid back than morning service. So if you want, if you got something to say, I'll read aloud to the audience, but I'll be reading your comments. And Joyce, you're welcome for the songs. Uh, I'm not sure what the next one will be. We'll find out. But uh, here we are for evening service. If you haven't looked outside, it's kind of rainy, drizzly out there. It's not real bad. Oh, good evening, Nancy and Gentry. The Vaughns are here. That's good. Uh, let's see. Announcements. I'm Scott Busich. I preach for the Escoda Church of Christ. This is my phone number, 989-305-2721. Uh, you're welcome to call me or text me. Anytime, and if you get a my message machine, well, you can leave me a message. Good evening, Nikki. It's good to see you. Uh, this is Stump the Preacher night, and uh, uh, normally what we do is uh, give you guys the opportunities to ask questions about God, about the Scriptures, the Bible, and uh, I do my best to answer them. And uh, nobody though gave me any questions none so i'm gonna i got a couple of announcements but this is your time to type out some sort of question that you have for me something that you've come across that you didn't understand some scripture that you're curious about and i'll do my best to answer them and if no one's got a question for me by the time i finish with prayer then i've got my own questions and we can look at that so let's see, moving into that, let's see, uh, announcements. So don't panic. Yeah, get that out of the way. Boy, the, it, I don't know about you, but it doesn't feel like um, panic. Uh, it doesn't feel today as panicky as it was several weeks ago. And Denise has got our first question. We'll come back to that, Denise. That's a great question. Her question is, why did Jesus need to be baptized? We'll get to that in a minute, okay? So, good question. Denise has got her first question for tonight. Uh, I want to remind everybody, the 24th, so in a, in a week, on a Sunday, we're going to start meeting at the building. Uh, if you're ill, stay home. We don't need to spread any diseases. Um, if you're feeling well, though, and you're comfortable, you're welcome to join us. If you're not comfortable or if you're in the high-risk category, feel free to stay home. Uh, we've got nothing against you staying home and, and staying safe. But May, May the 24th, we're going to start meeting Bible studies at 10 a.m., worships at 11 and 6 p.m. And here we are at 6 p.m., right? So uh, this will be the 24th next week, one week. And again, let me challenge you, if you normally only make like uh, the worship service, try to make the Bible study and the worship. Or if you normally only make the morning service, try to make uh, the evening service as well. It's, this is your opportunity to make some changes. Uh, Gentry's here. Uh, hello, Heather. It's good to see you. So that's May the 24th, and uh, we will be changing this format as well. Um, normally, we would broadcast just my sermon before the, the pandemic. We would just broadcast my sermon. We'll see about uh, broadcasting the Lord's Supper and my sermon. Uh, we're not going to do the whole service, but we'll do we'll do some of the service. So I got to talk with Bill and Mike about that. Um, but that'll be that'll be the 24th. We'll still be live streaming the morning service. I'm not sure if we're going to live stream the Bible study. I'm not sure if we'll live stream the evening service. 
traditionally we haven't, maybe we can make a change and we can start doing that. We'll see how this all goes, how this shakes out. Um, a lot of things are in flux. So, But that's May 24th. That's coming up in a week. Um, Dan, I talked to Dan today. Uh, he actually joined us video, uh, through the video conference at the beach. He's still at the hospital in Alpena. Um, they've still got him on uh, antibiotics. I'm having problems with the lighting, but anyway, so they still got him on antibiotics. He's recovering. He's doing all right. Um, I haven't seen any changes in his infection yet, so they're still working on him. Uh, keep praying for Dan. He's in good spirits, though, so he's doing all right. Um, I think those are all of my announcements. If you missed the statistics this morning, we've got 58 cases in Iosco County. We've got eight deaths, so the death count hasn't gone up in several weeks. The uh, illness count hasn't gone up. Um, so if if it has, it's only gone up a couple. So um, we're I think we're we're doing pretty well. Several businesses are opening. Uh, uh, stores are opening up. There's some uh, limitations on those, but uh, they're opening up. Uh, for worship service next week, we're going to have uh, individual cups and bread. They are all prepackaged. Um, we encourage you, if you come, to bring your, your face masks and whatnot and practice that social distancing, all of that business. But that'll be next week. Uh, Lord willing, if, if, if things go crazy in this next week, we'll be, back, we'll be right here on, on Facebook. But if, if things work out well, we'll be back at the building uh, next week. All right. All that said, let's have a word of prayer and we can get into... Um, Denise's question about why Jesus needed to be baptized. All right, let's pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for today, for this day that you've given to us. Father, we thank you for blessing us with it. We, we pray that the things we've said, the things that we've done, have brought honor and glory to your name. Father, may we, as your servants, may we spread the good news. May we share what we have with the world, with those who do not. And, uh, uh, may we be faithful, found faithful in all things, in all that we do. Father, may we, we glorify your name, grow the kingdom, and be your faithful servants. When we fail you, Father, we pray for your forgiveness. We ask that you'd watch over us and bless us. And be with us this evening as we open your word, as we study the scriptures, and that we become more like you, more like your son, and less like the world. Father, this is our prayer in your son's precious name. Amen. All right, so uh, Denise has the question about Jesus. Why did Jesus need to be baptized? And um, <clears throat> I'll be honest, uh, when I've gotten into the habit of using my phone to look up scriptures to find them, so this I may fuddle about a little bit. I've got my uh, handy-dandy concordance over here and some other things, so... Um, uh, let me let me find the verses that I want here as as we dig into this. Um, if you have a question about a specific passage, if you could give that to us to save a little time, <clears throat> excuse me, um, I would I would really appreciate that as well as everybody else, right? So um, let's see. Hold on. Let me look for the ones that I want. Okay. Turn to uh, the Gospel of Matthew. And this is the occasion. Now, Jesus' baptism is mentioned in several of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke. But the Gospel of Matthew gives us some reasoning behind why he's baptized. And, and we, have to be, uh, we have to be careful as we consider these things because um, one of the confusing things that people say today is that, well, I get baptized because I'm imitating Jesus in his baptism. But the, the problem is that Jesus' baptism is he receives the baptism of John. And we receive the baptism of Jesus. And those are two very different baptisms. Okay, and I'll show you that as, as we progress here. But first, let's start with Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 3, 
In the Gospel of Matthew, in chapter 3, in, uh, in verse 13, we, we read this. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to John to be baptized by him. Uh, John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. So the question is, why did Jesus need to be baptized? And, and if you'll notice, <clears throat> excuse me, um, if you notice John in his baptism, um, John's baptism is, is not the baptism that we receive as Christians. Look at what it says back in verse um, 5. Verse 5. And uh, again in verse uh, 8. Verse 5 and 8, which we didn't read yet. But back up and we'll see that what John is calling his audience to do and to be. So verse 5, uh, we read, Then Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region about the Jordan were going out to him, that's John the baptizer, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Hey, Stormers, it's good to see you. So, or Dave, uh, Tammy's here already. Yeah, okay, so so here we see that uh, that part of John's baptism is the people are being baptized, and as they're being baptized, they're confessing their sins. So they're confessing their sinfulness as they're being baptized. Uh, additionally, we read in verse 8, uh, when the Pharisees, verse 7, come out, the Sadducees come out for baptism, John refuses to baptize them. Look at what he says in verse 7. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers! Who warns you to flee the wrath to come? Bear fruit in keeping with repentance, and do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children for Abraham. And he goes on to talk about that. Uh, but look at verse 11. I baptize you with water for repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. So John's baptism is a baptism, a confession of sin, but also a baptism of repentance. And um, when he calls the when when the Pharisees and the Sadducees come out, they're not repenting. They're thinking that they're fine with God. Their relationship with God is intact. There's no problems between them and God. And John says, "I'm not going to baptize you. You guys aren't repenting. You don't get baptism." Um, those who are getting baptism, back in verse 6, are people who are confessing their sins. And then, again, they're also people that are repenting of their lifestyle. They're changing from living the way they want to live, and they're starting to live the way God calls them to live. They're, uh, as elsewhere in Scripture, we'll talk about how um, John will uh, call people's uh, back to God, the, the turning the hearts of the fathers back to God. So that's what John is after. He's after confession of sins. He's after repentance. And so when Jesus shows up, now, the book of Hebrews, the book of 1 John, uh, the book of 2 Corinthians, Jesus is sinless. He hasn't sinned. And, and, and that's why when Jesus shows up, uh, John says, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Well, did Jesus need to confess sins? Did Jesus need to repent of sins? And the answer, of course, is no, he did not. He didn't need to do those things. But look at what he said in verse 15. In verse 15, look at what he says. Let it be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. So when Jesus comes to John for baptism, it's not about confession, and it's not about repentance, but it's about fulfilling all righteousness. Well, what does that mean? Turn with me to the Gospel of Luke. Keep your fingers there in, in Matthew. We'll come back to Matthew. Turn with me to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 7, and, uh, and look at what it says here in Luke, chapter 7. Uh, <laughs> Oh, that's six. No wonder why I'm not finding it. Do, do. Yeah, here we go. 
gotta have the right chapter. Okay, Luke chapter seven. <clears throat> in in Luke chapter seven, in verse uh, in in some of the earlier verses, John's disciples come to Jesus because John's in prison, and there's some question about about some things. Um, and then in verse 24, Jesus is going to start talking about John the Baptist. And uh, in the midst of his conversation about John the Baptist, um, Luke gives us a parenthetical thought. He inserts a thought for us. Jesus doesn't say this, but Luke sticks it in here. And this is, this is important for our, our discussion this evening. In verse 29, uh, as Jesus is discussing you know, John the Baptist and, and who he is and what his, his position is in the kingdom, look at, what, look at what Luke puts in there for us in verse 29. When all the people heard this and the tax collectors too, they declared God just having been baptized with the baptism of John. But the Pharisees and the lawyers rejected the purpose of God for themselves not having been baptized by him. So remember, Jesus, when John, when John is baptizing for confession of sins and repentance, and Jesus shows up, John says, you don't need my baptism. And Jesus says, yes, I do. I need it to fulfill all righteousness. What is the all righteousness? Remember, Jesus is a Jew. John is a Jew. He's baptizing Jews. And what is Judaism all about? Judaism is about keeping the commandments of God. And so here we read in the commandments of God that he, that John's baptism was a commandment of God. Jesus didn't need to confess sins. He didn't need to repent. But what he did need is to be baptized by John. And so he goes to the river and John says, well, you don't need to confess and you don't need to repent. What are you doing here? And Jesus says, well, to fulfill all righteousness. What is all righteousness? All righteousness is I need to be baptized by you, John. Now, the, the world talks about, well, I get baptized because uh, Jesus is baptized. Let me show you the problem with that and how we are to receive Jesus' baptism and not John's baptism. Turn to the book of Acts chapter 19 and look at what's written there in Acts. <clears throat> Acts chapter 19 in verse 1. Uh, this, is, this is, of course, we're past Judaism. We're into Christianity. So Jesus has gone to the cross. He's died He's been buried. He's been raised from the dead. He's ascended to sit at the right hand of God. He's poured out the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and, and the good news has been being spread through the world. Paul is, uh, of course, appointed by Jesus to take the gospel to the Gentiles. And look at what we read here in Acts chapter 19 and verse 1. And it happened that while Apollos was at Corinth. Now, Apollos is uh, a, Jew, a Jew um He's a Jewish rhetorician. I mean, he's a public speaker extraordinaire. He, he is so eloquent. He speaks so well. He is the guy that people just love to hear what he has to say because he speaks so well. And so here we find chapter 19, verse 1. Apollos is at Corinth, and Paul passed through the inland country and came to Ephesus. And Apollos had been there. He had preached there in, in Ephesus. But see, he didn't have the whole picture. And you can go back and you can read chapter 18 uh, just before this, starting in verse 24. Apollos didn't have the whole story. And so in chapter 19, what we find is that the, the, the Paul comes to Ephesus and there's some disciples there, verse 1. But they don't know the whole story about Jesus and his resurrection. They only know the part that Apollos taught them. Go back and, well, <clears throat> read verse 24 and following of chapter 18. Excuse me. <clears throat> listen, listen to what we read here. Now, a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria, came to Ephesus. He was an eloquent man, competent in the scriptures. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in spirit, he spoke and taught accurately the things concerning Jesus, though he knew only the baptism of John. 
And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, but when Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they took him and explained to him the way of God more accurately. And when he wished to cross to Achaia, the brethren encouraged him and wrote to the disciples to welcome him. All right, so Apollos has been to Ephesus, but what he taught was only John's baptism. He hasn't taught Christ's baptism. He only taught that, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Look at verse chapter 19. Look at verse 2. So Paul comes through the inland country in, into Ephesus. He finds some disciples. Verse 2, he says, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said, No. We've not even heard that there's a Holy Spirit. And he said, Into what then were you baptized? They said, Into John's baptism. And Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who is to come after him, that is, Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized into the name of the, of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they began speaking in tongues and prophesying. There were about 12 men in all. Okay, so what we need to understand as we read this is, first of all, John was given an edict by God, a command by God, a law by God. You need to call the people to repentance, and as a part of that, you need to be baptizing the people. And, and the people were the Jews. That's who John ministered to. You go back and you can read, and you'll find that uh, the people from Jerusalem, from Judea, and the surrounding countryside were coming to John. Jews were coming to be baptized by John. And so here, I'm sorry, and so Jesus was baptized by John to fulfill righteousness. It was a command of God. Jesus kept the commands of God. And so he needed to be baptized, not for repentance, not for confession, but he needed to be baptized because it was a command of God. Now here in Acts chapter 19, we find that the, the, the baptism of John has been superseded. It's not good anymore. Jesus received the baptism of John because that was the command at that time. Here, we find that the baptism of John's no good. It's invalid. It has, he has no bearing. It's no longer a part of God's covenant with humanity. It's useless. And so when, when Paul gets there, he says, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said, no, we hadn't even heard of such things. And Paul says, well, then whose baptism did you receive? Now, if we receive the same baptism that J Jesus did, if we get baptized because Jesus is baptized, we're calling for a couple of things. First of all, this. <laughs> if we get baptized the way Jesus was baptized because Jesus was baptized, first of all, we're saying, I don't need to confess sins. I don't need to be a repentant person. Because Jesus didn't have to do those things. Ooh, that's a pretty strong thing to say, Scott. But it's true. If I'm baptized the way Jesus was baptized, Jesus didn't need to repent. Jesus didn't need to confess. Now, the other part is this. If I'm baptized the way Jesus is baptized, my baptism is invalid because John's baptism, Acts chapter 19, is no longer any good because it was the precursor. It was leading up to, it is believe on the one to, that he is to come. That is Jesus. These disciples had John's baptism. And Paul says, that's no good. You need Jesus' baptism. Now, in verse uh, 5, in verse 5, on hearing this, they were baptized in. Now, if your Bible's good, mine's not good. If your Bible's good, it'll have the word into. If your Bible's not good, like mine, it'll have a little number 2 by it. In, which is a footnote. It says, check the footnote down below. And you go down to the footnote, footnote down below, and it'll say, or into. If your Bible is horrible, it won't have a footnote at all, and you're going, Scott, what are you talking about? Okay, verse 5. On hearing this, they were baptized into the name of the Lord Jesus. And the reason why I'm emphasizing that, hey, Linda, thanks for joining us. <laughs> uh, so the reason why I'm emphasizing that is because it's not in the name of the Lord Jesus, but it is into the name of the Lord Jesus. What is that? That is into the possession, the ownership of the Lord Jesus. Without the baptism, you're not owned by Jesus. These guys were baptized into the baptism of John, and Paul says, that's no good. You're not owned by Jesus. You're not a citizen 
under the, the authority of Jesus. Jesus is not your king. The only way you get to have Jesus be your king is you get baptized by his authority. That's Acts chapter 2. But you get baptized into Jesus. That's uh, the end of the Gospel of Matthew, and that's here again in Acts chapter 19. Being baptized into Jesus. That's when you become a citizen of the kingdom of heaven, a, a, a follower of Christ, one who has the ruler, one who has the laws, and one who has the promises. Now, it's difficult because our society is so mixed up. It's so jumbled about what baptism is and how it works and how it operates. But if we're careful in how we study and how we read these things, then we can come to this understanding. Now, I want to finish with I want to finish with um, this thought from Ephesians. Turn over to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians 4 1. Look at what uh, Paul writes here to the church at Ephesus. Yeah, we're not done with the, the, uh, the Ephesians here. Look at what he writes to, to the Ephesians. And now remember, we just read Acts 19, right? They had John's baptism. Paul says, that's no good. You need to be baptized into the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So Ephesians 4, though, look at what he writes, starting in verse, hmm, oh, I don't want to confuse too much. So look at verse 4, chapter 4, verse 4. Look at what he says. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. John's baptism is, is not the one baptism because Paul says it's no good. So if you're going to be baptized the way Jesus was baptized, first remember, first of all, you're saying I'm without sin and I don't need to repent of anything. That's a pretty bad claim to make. That's a pretty bad start for being a Christian. But uh, the other part is this. If there's one baptism and you're getting baptized with John's baptism, which is no longer valid, you're also saying that Paul, as he says here, there's one baptism. You're saying, no, no, Paul, there's two. I can have John's baptism or I can have Jesus's baptism. Either one is good. And the answer is, what? Paul tells us there's one baptism. So, if we're going to be baptized, we don't get baptized like Christ. We do need to be a people, as we read elsewhere in Scripture, especially the book of Acts, we need to be a confessing people, a repentant people, a believing people, and we need to be baptized into the possession of Jesus. Not receiving John's baptism, but receiving Jesus' baptism, the one baptism. Why did Jesus need baptism? Because it was a command of God, and Jesus kept all the commands of God perfectly. He was without sin. You and I, we know ourselves, and we are definitely not Jesus, and we're definitely not without sin. All right, that's pretty much all I've got on that one right now, just off the top of my head. Uh, if anyone's got anything to add, I, I should have said this earlier. If you got something to add, feel free to type it out. I'll read it off. But uh, that's all I've got for that question, Denise. It's a really good question. When people talk about being baptized the way Jesus is baptized, they don't know what they're talking about. We don't follow him in that example. There's lots of things that Jesus did that you and I, we don't do. And, and that's tough because we talk about, well, I follow Jesus. I imitate Jesus. I do the things that Jesus did. Really? <laughs> uh, just, uh, let's see. Just here in chapter one of Ephesians, Paul talks about how Jesus has uh, received all authority, and we haven't received all authority. Uh, he talks about how he has power over the demons, power over Satan, power, and we don't have those sort of things. There are things, when we say, I, I try to imitate Christ, that's the, the mindset of the, the humility and the love and the compassion and the gentleness, but also the faithfulness that Christ has ex exhibited for us. But there's things that Jesus did that, we just are not going to be able to do. We just, we're not equipped to do that. Christ was, we are not. So 
those are my those are my thoughts about your question, Denise. Um, I'm, I'm done rambling, so if anyone's got anything to add, you better hit the uh, enter button. All right. Oh, I'm sorry, Glenn. <laughs> he says, actually, it's Glenn. It's not Denise. My apologies. So he says it's Glenn with the question. He's on Denise's Facebook. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, it, it is a good question, and, it, and it's one that uh, most people don't think about, especially especially in the in the culture today where a lot of people claim to be Christians, and then they say, we don't need to be baptized. And then they say, well, you need to be baptized for the remission of sins, which is true. If you go over to Acts chapter 2, if we want forgiveness of sins, if we want remission of sins, we need to be baptized. But we're not Jesus. So... Thanks for uh, enlightening us. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, Glenn. I appreciate that so much. All right. Uh, any other comments before we move on? I got about fifteen minutes, maybe. Anyone have a short, easy question for us? <laughs> All right, I guess we'll let that question, whatever it may have been, we'll let that question go by as well. So no one's got any comments, no one's got any questions. It's a lot easier when we're in person, isn't it? Because then we can discuss things and throw things back and forth. But uh, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to getting back to that as well uh, next week, Lord willing. So uh, I'm going to lead us in the Lord's Supper. I want to talk a little bit about contribution, uh, but uh, I'm going to... I'm going to say that we're done with questions for the evening. Um, it's a good question, Glenn. Thank you so much for bringing it up. I appreciate it very much. All right. Um, yeah. Yeah, let's let's do Lord's Supper. So Lord's Supper is is a very important time for us. It's it's we call it communion. And it's the time when we're supposed to be together. And so this communion, is, even as we even as we do this through Facebook, it's, it's not really communion because I'm not there with you. I'm not sharing with you. But uh, if you've not taken communion today, this is the best thing we can do right now. And again, next week, Lord willing, we'll be together. We can partake together. But uh, the Lord's Supper is about remembering the body and the blood of Christ. Jesus' sacrifice, his death. And uh, I forgot to grab my paper. In the book of Psalms, uh, Psalm 121, I want to read Psalm 121. I want to put our mindset into Jesus' sacrifice and his going to the cross and what he was willing to do for us. Uh, so if you turn to Psalm 121, listen to what David writes. Uh, this is a psalm that's ascribed to David. And um, this is a psalm that they would have sang. It's called a psalm of ascents. So as they came to Jerusalem to come to worship God, uh, this is a psalm that they would have sang as they ascended, as they climbed the mountain to get into Jerusalem. And again, uh, <laughs> no cars uh, no elevators, no airplanes. They would have been traveling, most of them by foot. Uh, some of them may have had a riding animal or two, but most everybody would have been on foot. So they would have been walking along up because Jerusalem is up on a mountaintop. They would have been climbing up to a mountain. So all of these psalms in this section, they're songs of ascent. And, and this is to get their minds ready to come to the temple to worship God. And, and it it's not something we talk about, but it's really interesting if you think about it. David didn't build the temple. It wasn't there. His son Solomon did. And so David wrote these ascents, the ones that David wrote. He wrote these in preparation. He looked forward to the time when his people, the, the subjects of his kingdom, his fellow Jews, would have come to worship God. And he says, I want you to have this in mind when you come before God. So just think about that as I read this psalm uh, here this evening. Psalm 121. 121, a song of ascents. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, who made the heaven and the earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. 
Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Jesus went to the cross, providing for us everything we could ever need. I know that's that's hard for us to think about because I still got to pay bills and I, I still, you know, still got to buy food. And, you know, sometimes I don't have enough for all of that. Jesus came to give us something so much more eternal life to give us the things that we really need, that we can't provide. There is nothing we can do. But he's right here with us, always. And he is here to watch over us and to love us and to provide us with the biggest thing that we cannot do, and that is this, verse 7, keep you from all evil, he will keep your life. And as David finishes, the Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth forevermore. Let's pray over the bread. Father, your son Jesus went to the cross to give us eternal life. He did this to give us that precious promise of eternal life, and we have it as a guarantee. Through his death, his burial, his resurrection, and his ascension, your son reigns on high. And we remember his gift of eternal life by partaking of this bread. It's in his name that we pray to you. Amen. Fruit of the vine, the blood of Christ. It was no light thing for him. It wasn't easy. His gift of eternal life comes at the expense of his blood being poured out. And he says, Scott, remember, by partaking of the fruit of the vine, remember this covenant that I've made with you. Remember this covenant that, that gives you eternal life. Remember this covenant by partaking of this fruit of the vine, Scott. Remember this covenant, this new covenant given through the blood of Christ. Father, we thank you for the Son Jesus, we thank you for his, his life, his death, his blood poured out. We remember his gift by partaking of the fruit of the vine, Father. We thank you for what he has done for us. We give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to read to you from... Uh, 2 Corinthians. Contribution. The two parts of Christian worship that are first day of the week. Teaching and preaching, praying, singing. Those are, those are part of our worship, but those are things that we, we, we have examples in teaching. Those parts of our worship are any day of the week. We see the New Testament church doing it all the time, no matter what day it is, no, what, no matter what time of day it is. Remember Paul and Silas in the Philippian jail, it's the middle of the night and they're singing, right? But there's two things we do on the first day of the week. Lord's Supper, contribution. We don't do those other days of the week. We don't have the teaching or the example for it. So we partake in the Lord's Supper, I want to talk about contribution. I want to read to you from 2 Corinthians. I want to read to you from 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Paul in the book of 2 Corinthians, he's trying to encourage the saints. I want to encourage you as well, but he's trying to encourage the saints. There's a famine going on in Jerusalem. The saints in Corinth said they're going to send money to help, and Paul wants to make sure that they are going to follow through. He wants to make sure that they're going to do what they say they're going to do, which we as Christians, all of us, as Christians, we should always do what we say we're going to do. That's a part of being a Christian. It's, it's part of being an honest person, but it's part of being a morally upright person, a Christian, someone who's dependable, someone we can depend on. And 
And so as, as we read 2 Corinthians chapter 9, I want to I want to look at verse 7. Because uh, people get confused and they seem to think that God has given us a set amount of money to give. Sometimes people call it the tithe. We're Christians, we're not Jews, we don't give the tithe. And there's a big study that goes behind that. And I'd be more than willing to expound upon that on, on our own time. But for right now, I want to read verse 7. How much should I be giving to, to further God's kingdom? And, 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 and how does that work? Look at, look at what God requires from us in verse 7. He says, uh, each one must give as he has made up his mind. It's your decision. Each one must give as he has made up his mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. This is your choice. How much are you going to give? How much does God want from me? God says, I trust you, Scott. Whew, that's tough, isn't it? All right. So we don't receive physical mail at the building, church. Let's go to Church of Christ, P.O. Box 222. Let's go to Michigan 48750. If you're not a member of the church, we're not asking you to send money. That's, in, that's, that's up to you. If you are a member of the church, we encourage you to send your contribution to the church in your area so that the gospel can be spread there. But for us, here in Oscoda, P.O. Box 222, let's go to Michigan 48750. That's where it's going. And how much should you be given? That's your choice. Here's my little envelope. I went to the, the post office. They got new stamps, Earth Day stamps. They've got some other ones, but they got new Earth Day stamps. So pick those up, right? Let's pray for the contribution. Father, we thank you for the blessings you've given to us. We thank you for our homes and our jobs and the work that you've given us to do. In this day and age with so many people without jobs, you have given us work. And for that, we are thankful. We pray for those who are without. We ask that you watch over them and bless them. And we thank you for the blessings you've given to us. May we be a blessing to others. This is our prayer in your son's precious name. Amen. All right. So uh, we'll be back here Wednesday night. You're welcome to join us. 7 o'clock. We'll be in the book of Exodus, studying the book of Exodus. 7 o'clock Wednesday night. Next Sunday, though, hopefully, Lord willing, things go right. We'll be back at the building May 24th. Bill's got Bible study at 10 a.m. Uh, we'll be worshiping together at 11 a.m. Uh, practice social distancing. Bring your masks. Uh, we'd love to see you. I guess handshakes and, and hugs are out, but uh, that's, 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 that's next Sunday. So there's that. Um, as always, we'll be on Facebook, doing Facebook Live, but it'll be a little bit later, so like 11.25 or something, uh, nothing concrete there. But uh, keep praying for those who are sick. Keep praying for the doctors and nurses. Pray for those who are without jobs. Uh, I keep reading stories about horrible stories and and I, I refuse to share them uh, because they're very personal stories and they're not mine, but uh, I don't want to take advantage of anybody. And so there's stories about people committing suicide, people not getting treatments that they needed, uh, people's businesses closing, uh, people's cashing out their retirements, people selling their homes because they can't make their bank payments. There's aid for most of those things. So if you know somebody who's struggling with that, let me know and I'll, I'll do what I can to try to connect them. But I give you those phone numbers and I forgot to bring them with me tonight. But I give you those phone numbers. There's, there's federal agencies that are here to help us. We as a church, we're here to help each other. And as Christians, we're here to help the world. So, hey, Debbie, we're getting ready to close. But thanks for joining us. <laughs> But so those are those are some thoughts, and uh, uh, it's easy to see the numbers for COVID virus. It's easy to test for it. It's easy to uh, I, I say easy. It is easy to treat to a degree. What's not easy to test for is depression, and it's not easy to test for 
somebody who's suicidal. And it's not easy to treat somebody who's suicidal. So pray for those people, for those people who struggle with, with alcoholism and drug dependency and all sorts of issues. Uh, I was listening to a report, they were talking about how uh, child abuse reports, cases, they're going down. But it's not because children, fewer children are being abused. It's because the children are not going to school and the school can't be reporting the child abuse that's going on. So there's more children being abused today. And that's just heartbreaking. So pray for those situations and those people. I, I don't wanna give you specifics and I'm not talking about anyone here in Oscoda, but there's people out there in the world that are dealing with this virus in a way that need prayer and the world's not able to measure those things the way they can measure if somebody's ill with the COVID virus. So keep praying for them. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I appreciate it. I'm humbled. Glenn, thank you for an excellent question. If you didn't get your question in, uh, make sure you, you, you write it down, save it for next month. You're always welcome to call me or text me and I can answer your questions privately. I've got no problem doing that. And uh, Keep looking at the scriptures, studying the scriptures, trying to be more like God. Let's have a closing prayer. Father, we thank you so much for blessing us. We thank you so much for the things that you've given to us. We thank you for today. We pray that what we've done and said today has brought honor and glory to your name. We look forward to uh, this next week when we get to actually physically come together to worship you. And we look forward to that time. But in between, Father, we ask that you continue to bless us and give us the opportunity to share your good news with the rest of the world, Father. We give you thanks and praise in your son's precious name. Amen. All right. Let me give you some closing music. Uh, i got to unlock the tablet here real fast. And uh, God bless you guys. Stay faithful. Uh -huh.